Welcome everybody, it's Romero17 and this is the second video for the rank championships analysis. Now I wanted to do for this specific segment of videos, I wanted to like show more fights where I was going through uh, some trouble. Uh, going through like fights where I'm like getting a little bit frustrated and you can kind of visibly see it when I'm playing. But I'm also going to break down how I can manage to overcome that. So the guy I'm fighting is Persian Pimp 101. And with Persian Pimp, what he does uh, really well, he uses like those minor steps. And it's really annoying to deal with. And he's very, uh, he's an aficionado when it comes to the knees. If you guys notice, he's sidestepping to the right. So what this does is that whenever I'm going with any uh, linear strike, so any straight strike, it helps him avoid it. Now, generally it was pretty easy to beat this guy before because he would overdo it and I'd be able to chop at the leg. But it seems like he's added a new layer to his game, adding a bunch of, like right there. I've never seen anybody throw a six-piece combination. I had a... Go on Twitter and ask Kinetic how the fuck. I asked Marshall and Kinetic how to freaking do that. But. I, <laughs> I'm like, holy hell, this guy is like throwing, throwing, throwing. And when I play with Aldo, I don't really try to do a lot of gamey stuff. I try to keep it simple. But when it comes to Persian Pimp and dealing with this specific style, the best way is to get him to the ground. So his style is very anti grappling. And he usually plays uh, with TJ Dillashaw and Bantamweight. So now that he's gone to Featherweight and he's oh playing with God. this. And you got somebody with 96 power. That was nice. It's a lot harder to take him down. And if you notice right there, he doesn't go for the takedown. He goes for the trip to do more body damage. Because the end goal for him is to kill my stamina and to wreck my body. You can, In the background, you can really hear, hear me getting like a little bit annoyed. Mainly because I'm more frustrated at myself not being able to like, catch certain things. Because I know what's going on. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, they were nice combinations, but I know that with the side steps, he's gonna take uh, extra damage when it comes to round strikes. And right there, you see that? So, him avoiding that simple jab, it, it takes a ton out of my long term stamina. And the moment I go for his body with a hook, he's firing off a knee, which is okay. It, it, it's okay, like it's the turn. Every time, every time I hit him with a lead body hook, he fires off a knee. And they are finding managed to get him down. I think he denied the first two, but. I, because I was a little bit frustrated on the feet, I wasn't really thinking too much when I was in guard. I usually do a much better job of uh, passing. And but we, <laughs> you hear me slap like the table, like God damn it! I can't believe I fell for that. But managed to get my a few of my denials off, and he does something that I don't not really accustomed to. Like I deny transition, and he goes back up the exact same way. It was for high kick, gets me in the tie clinch. And there's a small little skip in the video here, trying to block, and he denies the break, and I get head rocked, and I know he's going to go for the body, so I just got to circle away, circle, 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 circle away, and he goes lead hook, lunging straight, body kick, and that, that's pretty unique, I ain't going for it, not a lot of people utilize that uh, lunging straight the way that he does, so I'm going to give credit when it's due, but I'm looking at for the next time I have to run into this dude, and I'm in a, uh, I'm fighting, I'm just going to stick to round strikes, Purely round strikes, and I'm just gonna have to fire off knees whenever he throws the body kick. And he uses the retreat really well. I throw off a little petty Superman Jesus punch against Christ, the cage. Half my fucking stamina. I'm, I'm like, I'm pissed. Like, I'm annoyed. <laughs> but I have to get him down to the ground. I either have to land a block counter when he's going off with those triple body hooks. Oh my god. Okay, I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. I gotta relax. And if you notice, like right there in the background, I'm like, all right, I gotta relax. And that's the key thing that a lot of players don't do. They have a bad first round. And they don't reset and change the game plan. And what I started doing right now, I started planting round strikes as I set out what I was going to do in the, in the first round. I started going straight lead hook, hook, hook. Like I just started ramming those hook combinations because I knew he was going to sidestep. And now I'm in my zone. I'm feeling good about myself. I'm like, all right, we can get this going. Now, I don't manage to pass that transition. I've always wanted to know why is it that sometimes you can kind of pass when they're transitioning? I guess because... Uh, the top game and off the back has to be relatively uh there has to be a huge disparity between the two but i know uh, i took a lot of body damage in that first round so uh, i took a lot of body damage so i have to be aware of blocking the body and he knows that as well so i'm really preemptively low blocking my head off is fine but his head off is shot you see that i knew he's gonna fire off the knee so instead of focusing on catching it now he's going hook, 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 thinking I'm going to sway. So right there, instead of uh, panicking, I relax. I let my head off recover. Now he's going back to the side steps, even though I got him dropped three times in round one. 
Hit him with the X in case he tried to deny the takedown again. Oh my god. And it's it's frustrating, it's frustrating, but it takes a certain amount of uh patience to kind of see through what your opponent's doing it right there. I use this time I use the stun to take him down. He goes for the full guard transition. And whenever somebody goes for fakes and side control, the best thing to do is to go straight for the transition. So I managed to get the crucifix. This time I didn't really hold him there like I would want. But it's fine. I dropped him about three times heading into this. In, in the second round, I dropped him three times. And it's a far cry. It's so... <laughs> changed the whole dynamic of the fight. Now, I, I'm very aware that my body health is low. And he's punching my body, which isn't really too good here. Knowing that... Uh, <laughs> knowing that it's low. But I managed to get a takedown. Denied that single con transition he was going for. I definitely felt like my denials were a little bit off, but I go for the arm triangle. And judging by the gates, I kind of see that he does have a decent amount of stamina, even though I managed to deny transition. But I, managed, I botched that. <laughs> I botched that so bad. But the, the momentum is now in my favor. Momentum is now in my favor for this fight. So round one was definitely his round. But with the three drops and a little bit of ground control, almost finishing the sub, his head health, it's a, it's a game between a head health and body health. So, while I'm on top, there's 10 seconds left. While he's striking and doing all these transitions, I'm also just go for the body oh strikes. <laughs> yeah, that was 10-8. That was definitely a 10-8. Oh, I thought I dropped him three times. No, I rocked him twice, and then uh, I dropped him twice. All right, that's my bad. I really did not want to touch this dude's glove. <laughs> See that? Round strikes break the block. Now, if you guys don't know, people are so accustomed to breaking strikes with uh, straight strikes that they don't know there's a different animation when it comes to breaking the block with round strikes. So when you go jet one, two, head kick, you're breaking the block and it's susceptible to a round strike. But when you go yes, round strike, you break it a round strike, it's going to be a straight strike that will like finish off the block breaker. And there, when somebody's kind of ODing with the elbows, if you plant your own elbow after the second one, their stamina is going to be low. Like their stamina is going to be extremely low after the second elbow. And you can time your own planted elbow against their own. And that really benefited me right there. And there I go for the fake the tie clinch. Get him down with the outside trip. Deny that transition. And if there's anything that I pride myself on is that I don't really break. If I'm going to take an L, I'm going to take an L. But I'll never break like this. Now, I put him in a crucifix position. I know this. He's not moving. Not trying to transition. He conceded. He gave up. And that could have been gone completely different. Had I been uh, a little bit more frustrated, had I not taken that time to sit back and like realize what he was doing. You'd even hear me say, I'm like, all right, I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. I'm going to get after it. I definitely would have lost this fight, but managed to get the dub. Did some work on the feet in round two. Uh, really, his stamina was low. Like he used a lot of stamina in, the, in that first round. When it came to round three, I had significantly more stamina. He was gas after the first few strikes. But on to the next fight, and this one is going to be against my buddy Marshall Mind. So I'm blocking out his name because that's his alt account and. It's not, it would be wrong of me to like even show his audience. This guy's a good friend of mine, and he was actually doing a Yair Rodriguez showcase. And I messaged him on Facebook. I'm like, You motherfucker, <laughs> you didn't tell me you were online. So, here's the thing I'm a firm believer of invisible threats. What's an invisible threat? So, this is what an invisible threat is if you're playing middleweight, right, and you run into Jacare Souza, even though you probably say you don't know the player. You're already thinking, oh, this guy wants to grapple. This guy wants to sub me or something like that because he has Jacare Souza. So when you get rocked or something, you're pre-denying the takedown because you think he's going to go for a takedown. Lo and behold, the guy throws a hook. So when I am see Marshall with uh, Yair Rodriguez, I'm thinking, uh, I don't know if he's gonna if he knows all the combos that I know of Yair. I don't know if he's trying to set me up for a spinning heel kick or a question mark kick. So I was very aware. I was pretty cognizant. Of what Yair's weapons and what they were. And Marshall has a, does a really good job of like keeping his distance. 
And whenever and whenever I run into him with Aldo, I'm like, I really want to play a sim Aldo. <laughs> as sim as I can. So it's relatively interesting. I'm trying to time his feints, but he knows that I like to leg kick as my opponent's retreating. And what that does with those leg kicks, people don't know, so it reduces the power of uh, your opponent when you get their leg health, leg health down. And it doesn't only apply to punches. Because kick power and uh, punching power aren't uh, are tied in together, that also lowers the powers of his kicks. So if I get him to switch to southpaw for my leg kicks, I'll be relatively fine. I won't take as much damage. Now I'm just resetting, going for the Superman punch, and he tries to fire back too soon. Does a good job of keeping his high block up, going for the lunging straight. And here I was trying to pick apart my. Am I, am I fighting uh, Yair Rodriguez showcase Marshall? Or am I fighting competitive Marshall? Or am I fighting a little bit of both? The margin for error in a three round fight is crucial because in a five round fight you generally have enough time to work and you know it. And there I'm trying to get him to block low. That's why I'm fainting that lead leg kick. And then he's ducking, he's predicting. Those for the lead hook spinning by. <laughs> Spinning body kick. And there, I saw the block was overcommitted to the to to like where a straight strike would break it, but he didn't block low to the body. He knows we're very familiar with how we play, and he knows that if um I'm not really dictating the pace of the fight, and I start to overreact to his strikes, then it's gonna be a little bit harder for me to kind of come back. But I managed to get the drop. It was a pretty hard drop. And his body work. I didn't even know that uh, Yair had a lead teep. And what's good about that lead teep. Oh my god. He got me with an uppercut in that exchange. He loves that jab rear hook lead uppercut combo. The timing for that lead teep is different than uh, the side kick. The side kick you can kind of tell. But with the lead team, there's like a almost delayed startup. So it kind of screws with my time. <laughs> I mean, it kind of screwed with my timing. I was trying to sidestep it. And there I sidestepped it that time. Took away the damage. And there's 10 seconds left. And there he got me with a straight lead hook uppercut. So he had a whole three-piece combination off the slip straight. And usually the game kind of... When you get a knockdown a piece... I don't know if he would have finished the fight from there, but my assumption was uh, I'm gonna give him that round. Maybe I'll give myself that round. But I, my, I always kind of I like to assume the worst and think, all right, that was his round. I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on him, and I, I know he wants to keep me away. See, he's using all those strikes to keep me away, but I have to pay no mind. And uh, he's overreacting now. I'm in his face. And all I want my hit Marshall to do right now is to fire back. And I caught him with the leg kick. I'm surprised that one didn't drop him. And there he tries to fire for body kick. He says his high block and he blocked the tight clinch. Not a lot of people would have had to, like, the, um, <laughs> to be so relaxed during that entire exchange. So I'm going to give him credit there. Now, I didn't realize it until later on in this fight. But if you notice, he's traveling like a, a little bit of a faster distance. With that body kick. And the timing is different. So he's fainting the jab. To close the distance. And then firing off the body kick. And he's doing it extremely fast. And this is causing my timing to be a little bit off. And I didn't realize this until later in the fight. But I really want to keep this fight on the feet. Maybe because of my ego. Maybe I shouldn't have. But that those body kicks from South are doing a good amount of damage. But it's a 3 round fight. So I can... Blow the tank a little bit, and there, reason <laughs> triple body hook. Nobody expects a triple body hook, and Marshall's the first person to always say, "I ain't nobody gonna land a triple body hook on me." And I, nah, man, I hit them with an uppercut, so I was waiting for the day I can land that on him, and I finally did it. <laughs> Just to be petty, and I know he had something funny to say in the video. And there, I swayed the wrong way. If you do a moving slip to the side with the roundhouse is coming, you kind of shield yourself from the roundhouse kick with your shoulders. And that's what I was going for, but I went the wrong way. So that's a, something I got to start drilling. Ah, you see that? That was, that was clean. That was clean. He, clo he closed the distance with the jab feint, 
and when I'm backing away, I put myself back into kicking range, and then that roundhouse body kick lands at full damage. I should have pressed the take that button there. Sneaky, nice sneaky. Huge block. All I want, I want to make sure that my stamina, when I hang into round three, it's, it's going to be at at least 75%. Whenever it's a three round fight, I don't really need to have all my stamina heading into round three. Ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> no, <laughs> you petty bastard. I pulled it. I pulled it right there. I'm not stupid enough to do it twice. Sneaky, <laughs> you sneaky bastard, but I know it's late in the round And with it being a three round fight and I already got to drop in the rocks I won the round and I can eat those strikes Relatively Fine, like I'll be Gucci. So my assumption hanging into this third round the, the fight is 1-1, right? It's 1-1 You could say 30-20s. You could say I'm up two, but I'm gonna assume the worst and assume I'm up I, I'm assuming it's tied 1-1 so right now, because of where my body health is at, if I were to pull a strike and he fires off that body kick when, when he's at that range, he is 100% going to rock me to the body because my liver is going to be exposed and it's going to deal extra damage. Now there, I'm taking a huge risk. I don't do this in five round fights, but this is like a little bootleg version of the major sway into the roundhouse body kick or the major sway. You run the risk of getting knocked down really bad, and I managed to rock him there. I knew he was going to kind of low block. My stamina advantage wasn't that high, meaning that he had a way higher stamina than me. But doing that minor sidestep, right, doing that minor sidestep, I sacrificed body health for head health. I know his head health is lower than mine. And he does a really good job of keeping his grapple advantage high, striking my head. So what Marshall's doing, he's striking my head. He's not transitioning. He's not resetting his grapple advantage. And when I go for my fake and he doesn't bite on it, notice how slow my half guard transition is. He's not biting on any of my fakes. See how slow that getup was? His grapple advantage is extremely high and I'm resetting my own because he wasn't buying a single one of my fakes. So, good job. And I'm going to give him a respect right here because I, I could usually pass people's guards really easily if I'm on fire. But he, he did a good job. I couldn't pass it. So, props to him. But yeah, back to this uh, si minor sidestep. Small, small little skip in the video there. Ah, that one hurt like a motherfucker. <laughs> there it is. So again, I sacrifice a little bit of body health because he threw that kick in punching range. Now, if I was in kicking range and I went for that side step, it would be stupid. I'd have to go for like that moving sway to shield myself with my forearms from that roundhouse body kicks. But if he throws that body kick in punching range and I do that minor side step, then it's better for me. He's back to south. He's back to orthodox. And I go off with a rear elbow lead hook in case he tries to sway. He's caught me with a slipping combination earlier in the fight. Block that spinning heel kick to the body. And I know this is a matter of time. I've pretty much almost secured the round for myself with the rocks. So I have to stay consistent with my defense and consistent with my offense as well. Like, it doesn't matter how much stamina I have right now. It doesn't really matter. I know it's a three-round fight. He's going to try to push me into range. I could have gone for the little single. I don't know why it didn't work. I guess I had to be southpaw for that to work, which is kind of weird. And he's trying to circle away, keep me away with the jab. And now my body health is flashing. But, again, I shouldn't panic. I, need to, I know he can't see my HUD. So, I'm just going to act like I'm fine. I'm just going to act like I'm fine. Kind of crowded our punch, my punch there with his spin. If there's 10 seconds left, I'm still kind of like athlete compete mode. And I'm trying to catch it. He goes for the strike, and I pulled my front kick. I'm like, I ain't trying to kick my boy in my face. <laughs> I tried to kick him. I saw the decision. I saw that I won. It was really tense on my end. I'm like, oh, you sneaky motherfucker. I, I, I don't like running into my friends when they're doing showcases. If he's playing regularly, I don't care, but he's doing a showcase. And he uploaded this on his channel on the Yair Rodriguez showcase. And he, he did some really good work with Yair on his channel. Yeah, he had some crazy fights overall. I think he had like about five fights. So definitely check out Marshall Sh Yair Showcase. 
I'm going to leave a link in the description for his channel if you don't know of him, but you obviously should. But yeah, we're going to head on to this next fight. Now, this fight, I never fought this dude on my main account. Never fought him on my main account. I fought him countless of times on like my alt, and I've won. And this guy would like message me like, yo, are you Ed or something, or are you Unibot or whatever? And I'm like, no, dude, I'm not. <laughs> no. I'm not going to tell you who I am, but I ain't going to tell you I'm not freaking Ed. So... This is an error that a lot of players have after you beat somebody for a certain period of time. Now, he has Lightweight McGregor. Now, Lightweight McGregor has the best health stats in the game by far. Like, one of the best health stats in the game. Like, it's he's like a freaking tree. And I just wanted to... I was kind of... This is right after my fight with Marshall. I was like, alright, man. A decision? <laughs> we want to get a finish, but... Alright. And with Word Life, he's a really, he's a good uh, fan of Ed. So he kind of incorporates a lot of what Ed does into his game. Does that little jab, fake, body straight. Does a lot of the same combinations as Ed. That's like the jab, rear hook, lead uppercut or whatever. And usually when, I was on, when I'm on the ground, I have my way with the dude. But he got better. Like he got a lot better. In comparison to how I fought him before, so I, I'm gonna give him credit. That's why I want to upload this fight because he actually he gave me a run for my money. So I posture up, does the fake into full guard, denied that transition. Now I wish I knew more. He denied the top mount. That was that was a little bit different. I wish I remembered more uh, where people's arm traps were, so I knew not to strike to that side. And with Connor players, it's. You almost have like this uh, shield of invulnerability because you know that almost nobody in the first round can trade with you because your footwork is so good, your head movement is so good, your power stat is ridiculous. And you notice how insane that distance was that he traveled with that jab fade body straight. And then he was just going to tag my body with my short term stamina. It was low. Something Ed does a lot so that when you plant that body uppercut, It's uh, it kind of like increases the range and extent. Now, right, now right here, says against the little jab, straight to the body, and he wants to go with the lead body hook whenever my step, my short term stamina is low from landing my strikes. But I'm not in a good amount of damage with the lead uppercut, rear body uppercut. Kind of kind of picked up on what he was doing. I want to catch him when he's going for the lead body hook. He's doing a good job of circling away. Don't know why he wouldn't deny a takedown there. Now he's trying to sidestep now. And again, travels an absurd distance with that strike. Mainly because that strike is a combination. I don't think it was intentional for like uh, my friend uh, for Ed to find this, but you can relatively kind of exploit that to kind of clo close the distance because it's, it's that's way faster than it's supposed to be. But well, he did a good job of like pushing me with a sidekick, getting me to the cage, just touching me up with the jab, trying to get me to overreact. It's a three-round fight, and I noticed with the jab, jab, just to overreact and sway. And that that is something that I always felt like it needs to be fixed in the game. Like you can't have that combination be so ridiculously fast and have it track you at that distance. In season two. There was a problem. You could stay almost glued to somebody with that specific strike. So the entire meta would to everybody in the top 100 was everybody doing that strike. Like you were almost forced to do that specific combination to stay remotely competitive. Otherwise, like if you try to back up, you try to lunge, you can't get away. Now, I won that first round and I knew that I won it. But he did do a good amount of damage in my body and Connor has ridiculous power. I don't know if he has body snatcher or not. The stamina is relatively fine. Now, there's something I always say, like, don't force a counter. And then I said, jab straight, lead uppercut combo. Look for him to set that uppercut up. Huge uppercut misses. And he's doing, like, a really good job. Again, I'm a firm believer that, like, having a specific fighter changes the dynamic of the fight. If you use Connor, there's, you're always going to be a little bit more confident, a little bit more uh, 
reckless with your shot selection because you know that head health, that body health, that leg health is video game level. Now he goes for a face to leaf fucking body hook and goes for a real high kick. I, you, I'm so used to seeing the body straight. I didn't know Connor had that fucking combo and he dropped me. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. And that's a really good combination because you get the opponent to block low and then you go high. And usually the Muay Thai guys are the guys that have that uh, combination. And I didn't even know Connor had this fucking reversal too. <laughs> and then the low single does not activate. <laughs> it does not activate at all. And I feel like the error I was making in the second round, I was staying too much to the outside. I didn't want to be on the inside too much. But I am getting him to whiff a lot on some strikes. He's not pre-denying the takedown after the sidekick. And there, I managed to time a good leg kick just to kind of reduce his power just a little bit. Because I think if uh, that was in the first round. And there, I went for a double. And he goes for a single leg counter. I don't know why I registered as a single leg. I went for a double. Because his back was turned. I guess I mistimed it. And there, I thought he would pre-deny the takedown. He faced the body. I'm planting and ripping and just going to go for a pull counter. And this is all stuff I'm processing as I'm fighting. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I can't believe I got caught with this strike. Low key tip, when somebody goes out of range with that lead hook kick, they're really trying to set you up for the lead or side kick to the body. So what I usually like to do, if the lead hook kick doesn't land, I'll try to sidestep that. My stamina is relatively fine. And he's whiffing a lot of strikes. Doesn't go for the overhead. Whiffs that uppercut. And man, that, that drop really kind of like put the momentum in his favor. Ah, that freaking <laughs> instant transmission fucking uh, <laughs> distance shit. Now he's a southpaw, faints a rear hook. That should have been the first tell. So now... It's 1-1, heading into round three. And in a three-round fight, there's a lot of ground to cover. I swayed there. I didn't duck. I thought he would go for a straight strike, and he doubled up on the... He went hook, hook. Usually, players go lead hook straight. I thought he was going to go throw a straight, and he throws the hook instead and drops me. So, I'm looking at the scorecards. I'm like, all right, I struck him in round one. He has the round in round two. It's 1-1. Like, I, I know it's 1-1. I have to change the entire dynamic of the way this fight is going. And if I get dropped, I have to go full Terminator mode. And he's fainting that lead body hook again. I, th I really thought it was like a body straight. Now watching back, seeing it was a lead body hook. Good shit. <laughs> Good stuff. Now he's uh, relatively relaxed. And then he, get now he goes for the body straight lead high kick. And he fucking drops me, but I'm not dead. I recover right on time. Right on time, Poirier lives for just a second because he was out of range and his short-term stamina was low. So now it's two drops for him. And I'm like, all right, fuck all this technical shit. We finna brawl. <laughs> and is there any way to break somebody with pressure? Stop respecting. Don't respect their range at all. Don't respect their weapons that they're trying to do to keep it to the outside. And there, he goes for the slip. I was still rocked, but I slipped the uppercut because I knew he was going for it. And this is extremely risky on my part. But look, in wrestling, I, there's a saying. You're either going to lose by one or you're going to lose by three. I'm losing this fight right now by three. <laughs> by three points. I got to get a pin here. There's three minutes left for me in this fight. And I have to secure this fight. I'm an extremely competitive person, and I do not like losing. And there, his short-term stamina is low. I took him down. I'm looking at the clock. Managed to get an elbow off and I got all my I don't need this grappling shit right now. I need to break this man. And I can sense the panic. I can feel the panic. When you're lunging like that, you weren't lunging like that the entire fight. I'm like, no no no, I can't stay back. I can't stay back. And he goes for something. Third time I get rocked. And then he goes for the hook, thinking I was gonna sway. And I'm staying relaxed. I'm in his face. If I get a drop. And he uses the retreat. If he fired off a hook there, he could have dropped me there because I went for the body kick. And now I'm circling, doing the moving, circling hooks right there. 
Reminded that whenever I pull, I need to start doing the lead uppercut. And then I'm not, I'm literally not giving a flying fuck. I'm not coming forward. Breaking this block with the round strikes. And he's just circling. Like, he's panicking right now. He knows he had, he was going to have this decision one. And I am just staying glued to him. And I make Connor's footwork is really high, so I'm making sure I'm moving to his outside foot. Moving that the outside of that lead foot. And I'm making sure that third strike breaks through. And he's gonna try to set me up for a head kick. Sidestep, but I fucked up. <laughs> I was way too far. But his head off is low and it's busting. And I drop him. Like, nah, nah, boy, you won't get up. Nah, I'm gonna step back. He's doing a smart thing. He's doing something extremely smart, you know. This fight is relatively close. The momentum is now in my favor. His stamina is low. There's 10 seconds left for me to work. Oh. And he goes off for a lead uppercut. And I drop him. And this fight is mine. I didn't, honestly, like, this fight was so tense. I'm like, I knew I had to win this. I knew I had to win this. I checked the scorecards way too soon. But that, <laughs> that was a perfect example. You know, you're losing a fight. You have to put the pedal to the metal. You have to forget everything that you're doing. You gotta drop how you usually play. It. You gotta have a plan C. You have a you gotta have a plan A, plan B, and plan C. You can have one layer when you're fighting, but if you have multiple layers, multiple levels of defense and offense to go through, then you're not gonna win. Now this fight right here, I didn't realize who this was. I think it was King Troy, but I thought he was somebody else. So, but the other person that I thought he was plays almost exactly like him. So, the game plan I had coming into this fight, King Troy is somebody who's, uh, he's very, uh, picky with a shot selection. He doesn't go for anything crazy. There, I lunge the jab rear body hook. I mean, the jab, uh, rear body front kick, excuse me. And he keeps his shot selection very simple. Jab straight, jab lead hook, straight lead hook. And I'm, I'm using Cruz, who's my best guy at Bantamweight. See, he keeps everything simple, so he can have a really good uh, stamina advantage. So going with the jab lead uh, uppercut, jab rear body hook, straight lead hook, kind of gets you to overreact. And then once he sees that your character's a little bit fatigued, he starts to open up. And then he ducks the hook and the jab uppercut, jab uppercut hook. Get the first rock, and then with Cruz, my goal is to just simply touch my opponent. Go for the flying knee, because why not? Faith is spinning back for this now. I know with Cody, his boxing comp was a level 5, but he doesn't have much combinations that uh, stem off the... Not a lot of rear body kick combinations that come off a of kick, so I'm not too worried. I know he's going to have like jab straight lead body kick, maybe, at most. He's going to jab straight to close the distance. And with Cruz, I want to eat... Whenever I move to the outside, I want to invite him in so I can move my way out. You see that? I'm using the signature lunge to step out. And once I see him working my body, I'm planting. I, I don't. What I mean by plant is that when I use that left stick, I stop. Like I really stop using it. I stop moving, and I just let I let go of my combinations. It's a three round fight, so the margin for error is very slim. I don't hurt him pretty bad already, and I'm switching my stance, just making sure that he's playing a guessing game on what strikes he needs to go for now. Whenever I use Cruz, I know that the best way to beat Dominic when you're fighting one, especially when I'm using all these lunges, you got to throw leg kicks. But if I check a leg kick and I check a few of them in succession, you're kind of screwed because it kind of screws up your power. And if I check a leg kick, I get maximum grapple advantage and I can take you down. So I'm very aware of that. And then he fires off a hook, but he's out of range. Signature straight. That's it's all it's all a game of kind of cat and mouse or uses Dominic. You want to interrupt your opponent. Only exchange when it benefits you. But this is a pretty solid round for me. He doesn't feel comfortable in the pocket right now. I think the uh body front kick. But yeah, it's a pretty easy first round for me. And this was like after all those crazy fights that I've had, like relatively close fights, 
that could have gone either way if there was one mistake. So I was kind of happy to f get my last fight in for the day. Get a fight in with Cruz. And there, this is a little secret. Usually at that range, at the earlier range, people kind of pre-deny. So I waited a second and I went for the takedown. Now, if he was going for a transition there, that made that crucifix a lot easier for me to get. I It was extremely fast, honestly. But here I just want to do a little bit of side control action. For as long as the animation is active, it can be denied. But if he's faking, if I see... A pattern that people have when they're faking on the ground is that they fake one, they fake one way twice and then go the other way. So if I see that and I'm not in the mood to try to waste my time trying to deny you or whatever, I'm just going to go straight for the transition. Go for the crucifix again. And here I'm just burning clock. Here these punches are a little bit harder to uh, arm trap because of the way the animation is kind of set up. So I'm trying to use those punches more than versus on the elbow. But here, this is a good example of uh, change the game plan. Now right there, he's going for a momentum transition. And this is good on his part. Very good on his part. But now he's in a uh, backside. So if, for those of you who don't know what momentum transitions are, I'm going to put the link in my description for Marshall Mind's video on momentum transitions. Basically, when you're going a specific way, the transition is faster when you roll with it. So if right there... If he goes half guard, I knew he was going to go half guard because it's faster after you get taken down. So I pre-denied that direction. But for example, if, you go, uh, if you're in backside and you go to side control, sprawls a little bit faster. That's a momentum transition. And here I'm just doing all this work right here. Doing a lot of work here on the ground. Racking up a lot of damage. So might get good, uh, good transition there. Stack guard. I don't know if Cody has any submissions from that. I don't think he did. So I'm always throwing to the opposite side. So wherever his hand was holding my head. Good denial. Not a lot of people deny that. Wherever his hand was holding my head. I want to throw the opposite side. Because if he has a sub. It's going to be on the side where he's holding my head. You can play it back so you can see what I mean. There he's loading up a body strike. I'm going to let my stamina recover. And there, this is where I start to double up on the body hooks. Faint to faint with the signature cruise. And there, it slips the jab and I land the rear body hook. Feel free to add that to your game. With the, I, I think I explained that in the Dominic Cruise guide. And there he ducks, goes for a front kick. I go for a triple body hook. Flying knee because he blocks the body. Because he was conditioned to block low. And this fight is over. Probably one of my best uh, showcases with Cruz in a while. But that's it for the uh, the rank videos. Now the next video coming up is gonna be an anti jab faint body straight video that I did with Ed Parker. But yeah, you can see the first few fights. I was frustrated. I got hurt, but I managed to rebound and come back. And for this final fight, a little bonus fight is a little Dominic Cruz showcase for y'all that have been asking. So leave a like on the video. I'd really appreciate that if you did. I'm gonna have that video uploaded soon. Romero 17. I am out of here.